You got me. Gerald Briscoe. Taylor Williams of California. Here I come. No, We no. did it, buddy. I know I did it. How about that? How about this old man, man? 188 years old. And up here. <laughs> Damn shit out. This is a great day, buddy. Why don't you hold your face a little bit? We, I only see like half your... Okay, that's per <laughs> perfect. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen. Wait, hold on. We got we got your theme music here. You got what? I got your theme music. My what? Your theme you get, music. Don't get nasty with me. Hold on. Wait, hold on. I'm not I'm overwhelmed by this. Hold on. We got your theme music ready. Right? I'm trying to do my hook. <laughs> <laughs> Gerald Briscoe. Are you doing okay out there in Florida, buddy? You know, I couldn't be better. I I I, I had a great Saturday. I worked in the yard. I had great sunshine out here today. And, you know, I'm out here by with my wife and my, my son, Joseph, and um uh, He's kind of disappeared on me. I think he's finally, you know, had I got some good luck. <laughs> listen, I think I think what happened is that people they listened and they watched you on my podcast, "Don't Touch My Pod," which was released today, and they saw you both tell such great stories. And now all the ladies are calling up Joe, saying, "Hey, how you been?" Well, that's like, absolutely sorry. true. Taylor, I can't thank you enough. My, my my phone hadn't quit ringing since I appeared on the Don't Touch My Pod cast with Taylor Williams. And I've had requests from Jim Rome. I've had requests from Joe Rogan, uh, uh, Bruce Pritchard. Uh, I mean, you name them, and they're, they're trying to get a hold of me, but you were first, and you will, you're going to be the only one. I should say true to you. Wow, I'm honestly thank you, brother. It means the world to me that you did my show and that you refused to do anyone else's show. And also, you're welcome. Obviously, like I brought you back, you know. Great, I love your backdrop. That that, that <laughs> you, you got that expensive backdrop that you imported from Beverly Hills. I heard. Yeah, you know we got we got we got a few we got some a few millionaire investors to join in, and uh, it's a, it's a, we're running a corp a billion dollar corporation over here. You know. Of course, I wouldn't expect anything. Who all we got on there today? I mean, uh, who's listening to us? Anybody? Got, how, do, how do I tell who's listening to us? We got millions of people. Everyone say hello to WWE Hall of Famer, WWE legend, Gerald Briscoe. Everyone say hello. Anyone have any questions for Gerald Briscoe? Let's, let's ask him some questions. He's wrestled with Andre the Giant. He discovered Hulk Hogan. He's a former hardcore champion. 24-7 champion. Excuse me, very recently, 24-7 champion. Yeah. Does anyone, everyone, look at all this. Jeff says hello. Oh, everyone's saying hello to you. This beautiful girl just said that you have a beautiful smile, Gerald. How does that make you feel? Makes me feel wonderful. Uh, she's got a beautiful smile, too. Gerald, why are you looking? You're a married man. You can't say that. Yes, I can say that. I can say anything I want to. It's the action part I can't do. I understand. <laughs> I respect you. Yes, sir. Uh, Jeff Hahn says he misses FCW in Tampa. Were you ever working down there? Oh, FCW in Tampa. Yeah, that, that's some, some of the stories. That's where I was working when I did my injury on my shoulder that I told you about. That Oh, that's championship wrestling from Hollywood. Is that what you're talking about? From Florida. So this guy, no, this guy is, this oh. Brony's talking about WWE FCW. Oh yeah, I was I, I was down there. Yeah, I was I helped recruit uh, most of the guys that came into that place. Well, so but Gerald Briscoe was in the original Championship Wrestling from Florida, and that's where he told a story on "Don't Touch My Pod," the podcast now available on YouTube and available on iTunes and Spotify. He told a story about breaking his arm and then seeing some pretty ladies, and then his arm wasn't broken anymore. 
No, it was seriously <laughs> healed up so I could wash that car. There they got fired for that. That's never forget. That. <laughs> Buddy, I, I got to tell you for real, you're so, you have such, you have such an inspiring attitude all the time. Like I'm being for real for once. You're like, so you have such happiness and kindness all day, man. Like, what's your secret? How do you stay like this in scary times like this? Well, I'm just happy to be here, man. I mean, <laughs> you know, <laughs> it's a great time. And, you know, it's a great time in my life. You know, I can sit back and relax and enjoy uh, some of the, uh, the, the spoils of my, uh, my journey to here. And, uh, and, you know, I've made a lot of friends, and I try to keep young because I have young friends like you that, that, that keeps me uh, technically involved in, in, in this technology. So I'm enjoying myself. Why not, you know? Amen, brother. I'm very impressed that you figured out how to, how to get in this thing. I am, too. I probably couldn't <laughs> do it again, and I wouldn't try it if, if it hadn't been for you. You're doing great. Um, anyone have any questions for the WWE legend, Hall of Pro Wrestling Hall of Famer, Gerald Briscoe? I think we ran them all off. No, there's millions of people watching, buddy. They're laugh they're laughing. Somebody ask a question or we're gonna we're gonna um, we're gonna cough on you. Oh, please don't cough on me. <laughs> no, I'm not gonna cough on you. No. Chris Carmichael says, "Tell an Andre story." Oh, Chris Carmichael, tell it. tell what? What's Chris? Chris, let me tell you a story about Chris Carmichael. Chris was one of my high school wrestlers. Oh yeah. When I was a volunteer coach at, here in uh, uh, Florida at Sickles High School, Chris was one of these guys. He came out as a freshman. He kind of had the athletic ability of a Taylor Williams as a freshman, you know. <laughs> But we worked on him, we worked on him. His, his sophomore year, he wasn't worth a crap. His junior year, he wasn't worth a crap. So here comes his senior year. He wasn't worth a crap. <laughs> you know, that guy worked harder than any guy I've ever known to ever come, come out for wrestling. And, and half the time he wasn't eligible, the reason he didn't try. But he worked hard, and Chris is a great kid. Went to Chris's wedding. It was outside in Florida in August. That shows you how bright he is you know, outside. <laughs> of and I'm old in that heat. It was 108 degrees out there, and uh, he had like 10,000 people at his wedding. And so um, I told him finally, I said, "You're not going to miss me." So I, I I took a powder and I I, I headed out the exit. <laughs> but Chris is a great kid. I he's one of my favorite wrestlers of all time. Thank you, Chris, for joining us here. This guy, he, Chris says you came for the beer. I know that's why else would I go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is great. My buddy Shane from the Harlem Globetrotters is here. What's up, Shane? Sending you all the love, buddy. Gerald, you ever see the Harlem Globetrotters? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll tell you a little. Uh, 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 the kid, the guy that was from Pop or Sally Saw, Oklahoma, Goose Tatum or uh, Marcus Haynes or one of those. He was he was a friend, a wrestling uh, fan of ours back because you know we're from Oklahoma, and uh, uh, and uh, Marcus was from Oklahoma, so uh, we got to be friends. And it was a sad day when he passed on. But I've been a Globetrotter fan forever and ever, and uh, and. Uh, they're a great organization, and man, I hope you guys get back on the court real soon and entertain the people like you guys love to do. You guys, is Gerald Briscoe not the best? Look at all his positivity and love in this crazy world. This, you're a beautiful spirit, brother. Let's see. Uh, Cam Bastarachi says, OK State in the building. Go Pokes, a cowboy wrestling legend. Go Pokes, man. OSU, Cowboys. Let's, let's go 12-0 uh, and 0 this year. Hope we have a football season. Go Pokes. Uh, beat OU. Sorry, JR. <laughs> <laughs> Broken Bo, Oklahoma, also here in the building. Briscoe is a legend. Broken Bo, Oklahoma, one of my favorite places in Oklahoma. You've never been anywhere until you did been down in that hill country, Oklahoma. It is so beautiful. You probably played, played in casinos down there. I know you. You know me. Eh? You are. 
knowing that being the star that you are, I'm the only book the top five talent in those big uh, Chickasaw casinos there in Oklahoma, and I'm sure you played it. If not, tell me, and I'll get you booked there. This this whole time you could have been my agent for Oklahoma. You never told. I've, you're a wrestling agent. Of course, you could be a comedy agent. Well, I read all help. these text messages coming to you. <laughs> I'm big enough. Yeah, all, 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 all two thousand of us know each other. <laughs> I've been dodging you. I really messed you up. You know, I grew up in a little town called Bow Legs, Oklahoma. Population two hundred people. When the Briscoe family moved to Blackwell, the population went in half. So. Really? I'm put my phone back down. Really, yeah. I'll tell you where I performed in Oklahoma. I performed at University of Oklahoma. Boom. <laughs> Did JR get your book there? No, is he the guy who Did booked JR come to your show? No. I came to your show in Hollywood, California. You came to, you came to my show in Hollywood, California, in Tampa, Florida. You come all over the world for me, buddy. I know it. Anywhere for Taylor. <laughs> and I performed in Tulsa before. That's a good place. Tulsa's a good town. I performed um, the Bob. I'm looking up the venue. Bob uh, Will. Bob excuse me. I'm incorrect. I for the Brady Theater. The where? You know the Brady Theater in Tulsa? Not that dive. Have you been there? No, I've never been there. <laughs> it was it was kind of creepy. Actually. It wasn't big enough for me to perform. <laughs> oh, excuse me, sir. I understand you you need you don't do under ten thousand. Is that right? That's right. <laughs> who we all we have on there? Anybody who anybody else from Oklahoma? Yeah, we got. I don't. Uh, M underscore Rod seventy five. Look Good. at my teeth. Uh, go pokes there. You know what that is? That's a guy in a wrestling outfit with a cool mustache. And it's That's something. Pistol Pete, man. Pistol Pete? Yeah, Pistol Pete. Uh, well, hello. Pete Egan. He was a real cowboy from Stillwater, Oklahoma. Well, tell him I said hello. He became the mascot at Oklahoma State University. This a real guy. Had a wrestling signal that they're getting ready to take somebody down. But do you think he would? So he his he was a cowboy. So cowboys didn't rest, wrestle. He was cowboys. a real cowboy, man. So he had a gun. He wrangled wrangled steers. He wrangled everything. Yeah, he had a gun. Can you see those guns on him? Look at it. See right there. Where are the guns? Well, you can't wear your gun to a wrestling match. Come on now, David. Wait, let me ask you this is a serious question. We should have talked about it on our podcast, man. I really blew it, buddy. You you're a Native American. Cowboys yes. aren't your friends. Do what? Are cowboys your friends? Oklahoma State cowboys are. <laughs> I because I always thought cow. Yeah. I did like John Wayne and Jr. got mad at me because I told him I wasn't a friend of uh, John Wayne or a fan of John Wayne because because of the Wild West. He said, but John Wayne never killed an Indian. And so I had to go back and look through all those damn John Wayne movies, and I'm still not a John Wayne fan. He, <laughs> he wasn't he wasn't a friend of Indians. He didn't kill no Indians, but he wasn't a friend of Indians. But uh, you know, yeah, cowboys. If, if they're good cowboys, if they're wearing the black like my cowboys from Stillwater, Oklahoma, they're they're good people. They're married to who? <laughs> they're not married to anybody, even those Wyoming cowboys. You know, there are cowboys in Wyoming, too, and they have a pistol, too. But ours is better looking. <laughs> I get anybody uh, mad in Wyoming, I hope. I, I, uh, coach out there is a good friend of mine, and uh, he, he wrestled at Oklahoma State. So he, he went from wrestling as a cowboy to coaching cowboys in Wyoming. Oh. I've never been to Wyoming. That's one of the few places I've never been in America. Wow. How come? What's that, what's that uh, Eskimo Joe's, Stillwater, Oklahoma, we're giving Eskimo Joe's a shout-out. <laughs> Best chili fries that you can get in the entire world. I grew up, actually, I lived right across the street from Eskimo Joe's. Now it's a parking lot Eskimo Joe's. Really? Yeah. You know, I went back to Stillwater, and I lived in like 10 houses in Stillwater when I was a kid. 
and there's not a single house standing that I lived in. A T Boone Pickens bought them all for the campus because we lived right around the campus. They tore them all down and built that athletic facilities and uh, things like that all, all, all on the houses on the property where I was. Wow. So having a single house there that I grew up in. But Eskimo Joe's right across the street, right behind that white building that was a barber shop. It used to cut my hair where I had hair. <laughs> Had more hair and Taylor when I was okay. <laughs> okay. Like, okay, yeah. Oklahoma. Oh. I'm I'm vulnerable right now. I'm in a pandemic, Briscoe. I need your support. Okay. Okay, well, Taylor, you're gonna make it. <laughs> Briscoe, I talked about you. I did, for Fox Sports a few days ago. They did a WrestleMania three watch along. And so it was like, a, it was a video chat like this, but it was like 30 people at the same time. It was a battle royal of talking. It was very stressful, but it was, you know who was in there, buddy? What, there are 30 announcers? There was, th there was 30 people in the chat room. It was like this, but instead of two, there was 30 of us. Oh, wow. It was and overwhelming. You were, you were the star. You're the one that stood out. I was the star. It was me, JBL, Evander Holyfield. JBL, you was on the, you was on the. You know who called me today? Just out of the blue, I'm sitting here. Last night, I can we do this? I, I'm gonna plug a TV show. I was watching that Road Warrior special. Oh Road yeah, Warriors, I watched it last night. So you know, it brought back a plethora of memories. And I, I'm, you know, I was thinking about all my times, all my matches with the Road Warriors and all that stuff. And I'm sitting here today, my phone rings. It says unknown caller on it. Well, you know, I'm furloughed. I'm thinking the worst. You know, maybe it's the vet spec man calling me and telling me I'm fired or something like that. So I all boo-boo faced me like Brit Pritchard turned into Pout Boy. I hit that. I go, well, let's get it over with. So I hit that button, turn it on. I hear Brasco, woo! It damn Ric Flair, Nature Boy Ric Flair, and his lovely wife calling me and uh, and wishing me well, checking up on me, and uh, telling me, you know, they're getting ready to come down to Florida, and you know, maybe we can meet and all that stuff. So, had a great conversation with with the champ, and uh, he's so fun to talk to. We were telling, we started telling stories. Old Georgia Championship Wrestling, old Road Warrior stories, old shooting stories from the past. We were on the phone laughing with each other about an hour and a half. Finally, I got bored and said, got to go. <laughs> <laughs> but I couldn't Dude. believe it just out of the blue he called. But, uh, you know, JBL, he gets in touch his bases with me all the time. And just to tell me how old I am and tell me I'm in the, the prime uh, 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 category for coronavirus virus and, uh, and to stay home and stay healthy that the world is a safer place with me at home. I mean, it's true. Why is that? Why are you sticking with JBL side now? Listen, are I you, thought he was are you asking him for a job or what? Listen, he I made a joke and he popped and that now we're friends. <laughs> I don't He's think, a I don't think... Texan. <laughs> He's a what Texan? He's a what? Texan. <laughs> Is it, 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 it's true. He, uh, I thought he was going to be scary, but he liked Who's my that? Look at good Mr. Think... Crystal. Who's that from? That's from Tom, Tomas Kunha. Wait, let's go through the messages. People have been talking to, about you. Tomas yeah, is looking, read looking, some message. Tomas is looking good, Mr. Briscoe. Um, Cam, the Eskimo Joe's guy. You're so happy. <laughs> um, Cam says, go George's stables. Um, what else? Briscoe and Patterson as McMahon Stooges with some of the best content of the Attitude Era. Thank you. Maria is from Tulsa. That's Maria from Tulsa. That's what. That's who she is. Uh, I'm in Kane's Ballroom. Remember Maria? You know where Kane's Ballroom is? Home of Bob Wills. Okay. Um, and so sweet. Tell, uh, Chris Carmichael says, tell an Andre story or Kurt Angle taking out Brock Lesnar in an amateur match. You okay. Um, you're like, no, thank you. 
<laughs> hey, um, I'm listening to the messages. That's what, what we're, let, let's give some shout outs to these people giving messages, Taylor. Okay, well, a broken, oh, excuse me, you're correct. A broken Ben, ben Doll says, Hey, Gerald, what kept you wrestling? What kept me wrestling? Yeah, she wanted you to quit. Oh, I didn't want to quit. I, uh, what kept me wrestling was I wanted to make a living. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, isn't that kind of funny? I don't know if you relate to this, but like comedy was my passion. I was in love with it, and then somehow it became a job. Yeah. And then it's, did did you did wrestling? Wrestling was your passion before you got into it, yeah. Wrestling was my passion. Yeah, you know, since I was like seven, eight years old, you know, I'd wrestled uh, elementary school, uh, middle school, high school, college. I mean, I just well, wasn't good enough to go international in the Olympics. I wasn't really that good enough in college, but I, I got by. I lasted, I lasted my time there. And, uh, and so I uh, had some great competition ahead. Of me. But, uh, it was a passion, and I, I got into this. I had an exit plan. You know, you, you probably had an exit plan to get into comedy. Well, I'm going to go, and I'm going to be the greatest. I'm going to turn into Chevy Chase, and I'm going to retire and be happy. <laughs> Well, I had, I had that same, but I had 10 plans to go and I'm going to wrestle for 10 years and I'm going to save my money. I'm going to get out. I'm going to, what, my hair messed up? You give me a signal or what? <laughs> no, I'm looking at me and <laughs> I'm listening. So where was I? So anyway, I had that exit plan. So I, and I, and I, and here I am 50 years later, still, still looking for another wrestling job. <laughs> how, how special. Do, uh, what was I going to say to you? You threw me off. I had a whole question prepared. Any, everybody, for anyone just joining, we're here with WWE Hall of Famer, Gerald Briscoe. And if anyone has any questions for Gerald Briscoe, Anna says hi. Taurus Turner says hi. I am Joshua says hi. Rich Memory says hi, Taylor. Not to you, but just to me. Oh, hey, Rich. Hi to you, Rick. <laughs> You're on the blue um, zip you a lot for some reason i'm sorry the blue mini watches you a lot for some reason blue mini is my buddy oh, oh that's the reason he watches you then <laughs> yeah he's a good guy i can't I he can't is tell great you. him and his lovely wife are there what a great couple they are I, they're so much fun to be around so so positive and everything i love people like that you know uh, you know be happy I agree, man. It's hard sometimes, but it's easier when you're around people like yourself. It's it really is contagious. You're making me smile so much, buddy. The dirt says hello, and fish in the sea says hi. These names, these are these parents give these kids some odd names, huh, Gerald? Yeah, you well, you attract those odd people. <laughs> not that there's Back in there's my day. not that there's anything that you want you. Need, you need somebody like you to attract a certain segment of society, you know. <laughs> that is true. Listen, there's, you know what they say, there's a lid for every pot, you know. Absolutely. Is that an old <laughs> I don't know. I heard it somewhere. It's dating advice that I got somewhere. Probably from your rabbi. <laughs> I don't think John Wayne liked Jewish people either, actually. I think I heard that somewhere. Well, you know, I always try to be in your tribe, you know, to try to join, but you haven't you hadn't given me that. I'm, I took your advice. I made that one call, and he didn't show up. Uh, <laughs> so I got mad. So I made the second call. I gave him a second chance. You know. And he didn't show up again. You got to go one more time, buddy. Oh, yeah. is that the trick? Three yeah. times? And that, then they bring, they bring the third time. time. The third time they bring the scissors. They will be there the third time, or what? With the scissors. What? With the scissors. With oh, I, I, too late for that, man. <laughs> Gerald, did you go? <laughs> did you go back? Did you watch the interview? Yeah, you took so long to introduce me in the beginning. I lost, I lost uh, focus on what I was trying to tune into your thing for. Listen, you gotta give them a little, little something before you. you Gerald, you're the main event, buddy. You gotta go through some. You gotta warm them up. Is that what that was? You know? 
you got to scare them off. It's kind of like the becoming Jewish thing. You got to you got to scare them away. And the people who really want it, they'll stick around, you know? Well, I stuck All around. Right, some... Listen, you did great. Can you be proud of yourself? You and Joe did a good. Stop looking at the comments. I'll read you the comments, OK? OK. You need to stop. Re... Don't Sir. get mad. <laughs> you know what? You know what? You know what? Uh, funny story that you have on Bruce Pritchard. Well, I was about to say Bruce Pritchard. What he says to me when he acts like you, he goes, "Don't get hot." <laughs> Listen, That's the only story Jerry, you know on Bruce Pritchard. I don't know. I had one. Do you remember when I was walking? Here's my. Here's a fun one that only you'll enjoy. Is when I was walking with you on Sunset Boulevard. We just went to the wrestling show. Oh, that's when I mentioned you. I told David Arquette on this Fox Sports video chat. I said, I sat next to Gerald Briscoe. We watched you wrestle at the comedy store. And he was really, it was very special to him. He said that show was a big deal because Andy Kaufman used to perform there. And he was like, he felt for full circle. He got to perform on that show. I you know, enjoyed that hell that day. That was fun. And this, we walked down Sunset Boulevard and we saw the John Cena sign. Remember John Cena was up on the billboard? Right. And you gave me a funny, embarrassing story to tell Bruce Pritchard. So we called Bruce Pritchard and I started telling him the story. And he was like, I'm with people right now. And then I was like, it's OK. Remember one time this happened and he hung up on me. That's Bruce. He, he has no sense of humor. <laughs> he was in the office. He was with the office. He brings the office in the car with him. Well, he's a he's a stooge, man. <laughs> you, you just played a stooge, but you like you, he was your he. It's like when Robert Downey Jr. played Charlie Chaplin. He wasn't really Charlie Chaplin, but he had to. Charlie Chaplin was the real one. So brisk. So so brother love was the stooge, and you used him probably to learn how to be a stooge on TV, right? Uh, that's it. I mean, uh, Bruce. Tell me if you got to have. Tell, tell me about the roast with Bruce Pritchard. How did you? How did you? How did you just you and Conrad dram that up or what? So my that buddy was, Brian. That was a sketch. I'm sorry. That was terrible. The roast. Yeah. <laughs> it's online somewhere. There's a lot of nasty comments. I know it. <laughs> what, what else we got there? Who else? Oh, you, is Oh no! The, not, wait, oh, hold on. Let me let me up. I'll tell you a, a Bruce Pritchard story, but let me catch you up. We got a lot of comments happening. I want you to know what's okay. happening. All right. And I'm happy to answer your question. Overhuge says Jerry the fucking. Sorry for the foul language there. I'm just reading. Okay, it's PG. I don't like you, man. <laughs> Jerry the fucking legend Briscoe, get on live more often. Give us more Jerry Briscoe stories, especially especially with Mr. Mac Man. You got to give the people what they want, brother. They want you, okay? Uh, a wrestling historian. Do you want me to keep going, or do you want to respond? Keep going. To oh, I'm, I'm, I'm liking this, you know? A wrestling historian says, can you share a funny story about Pat Patterson? Let's hear Let's I'll tell you a story about Pat Patterson. It involved Bruce Pritchard, myself, and Jim Ross. And we're, we're uh, you, know, you know, Pat, uh, Pat's a great guy, but he, you know, I, we would make him so mad that he, we would start ribbing him about personal things and uh, about stuff. We're on the highway. We're going from San Antonio, Texas to Houston, Texas, about a two-hour drive. And so we're, we're harassing Pat, and Pat is Pat sitting in the back seat with me, and Pat Pat's getting all uh, boo-boo face and everything, and Finally, we get to a rest area, and he said, I've had enough of you guys. I'm going to get out of the car here. And so we started on him again, you know, about getting out of the rest area. So you, you can't get out of the rest area. It's not safe, Pat. You know, you know, you just don't want to get out of here. So we finally got to the hotel in, in Texas. So Pat always liked to go to the bar and have a little nightcap before he went to bed. So. We went there and we uh, we started messing with Pat some more, and finally he just he just uh, had enough of us and uh, and started chewing us out, and then and then him and Bruce uh, locked up like they were gonna do something with each other, and uh, and Pat turned around and and said, "Say it's all your fault, Briscoe. It's all your fault. Uh, if you hadn't wanted me to be the stooge, you know, I would have never got into this situation." And uh, 
But it, you had it's one of those you had to be there type of situations with Pat. But Pat Pat was so funny to be with. Pat's a funny man. He's hilarious. How did you guys? How like listen? I don't have to tell you, but wrestling and comedy are two different art forms. You guys were com brilliant comedic actors in the ring when you guys were playing the Stooges. Whose idea was that? And did you? And how did they know that you were good, or was it you? Like, how did you know it was going to work? We did know it was going to work. It was just. Uh... It really happened by accident, and I, you know you got to give the give the devil's due. The guy that really came up with the, with the thing and that really came up with the name the Stooges was Vince Russo, which Bruce Pritchard hates. And uh, you're going to give me hell for plugging Vince Russo, but Vince Russo actually came up with the name the Stooges, you know. And he he did he's trying to be disrespectful, you know, uh, of the name, you know, and. Uh, but we just ran with it, you know. We made a fun and Pat, Pat, Pat. The story about Pat, Pat. You, I used to piss him off so much. Of that. I would tell him the sort. Pat, here we worked, you know, all of our career to be a legitimate wrestler, to have respect in the ring as, as a great performer. You know, Pat out in, in California, but he, Pat Patterson, was a god. Him and Ray Stevens were the greatest ever, you know, and. Uh, my brother and I down south here, we worked hard and we got we developed a pretty good in ring reputation. I said, but the whole thing about it is these these two years that we've spent as the Stooges, nobody's gonna ever remember what you did in the Cow Palace or what I did in the Armory in Tampa or what you did in Cow Palace in San Francisco. All they're gonna remember is those goofy ass uh, Mr. McMahon uh, skits that we did on Monday Night Raw and uh, and SmackDown TV, and he used to get so mad at me. Briscoe, why, why are we doing this? Why, why are you talking man of doing this? I said, well, it's fun. And uh, but uh, Pat hated being a stooge until we we, we got got in the ring uh, with the Mean Street Posse, and he started having fun. That, by the way, the highest rating of that time, of all time, on Monday Night Raw was the Stooges and the Mean Street Posse. Really? Really, over eight million people, I think it was. That's no one watches that. Not like even hit TV shows now don't get that many views. That's legendary, oh. dude. Well, I am. I am. <laughs> You're so modest. I think that's what how did like you talk about you know, coming on this? What is this? Is this your podcast again, or am I getting paid for this, or <laughs> paid no, last that's... time, or what? I'm just, I'm just, uh, I'm using you some more, buddy, to help my career. Well, you, for you help me, I, I get, I get, I get uh, 50 more followers every time I get on the tweet with you. Listen, if anyone's just joining and doesn't know me or doesn't, um, there's some people who only know one of us. Gerald Briscoe is a WWE Hall of Famer. I'm a comedian. I have this podcast, Don't Touch My Pod. I did an hour interview with Gerald Briscoe, and it's on iTunes and YouTube and Spotify. And uh, oh, I got a new follower. Cam Bastaracci says I got a new follower because of Briscoe. Briscoe, oh. you owe me twenty bucks. I'm stealing your fans. Thank you. Okay. You, pay, you pay me for every fan I take. Hey, Carmichael probably followed you too, so that's another follower you picked up. This is great. Wait, hold on. We got more people saying things to you, buddy. Um, which hurt worse, a Ric Flair chop or a Big so Show slap? A Wahoo McDaniel's chop. You know Let's who Mike Daniels was? Yeah, I hear about him. I've seen pictures of him, but I never saw his matches. Oh man, he was—he's one of the greatest guys ever, too. He was Chickasaw Choctaw in and just like myself. But uh, oh yeah, he, he played for he played for the University of Oklahoma. He's an All-American football player, and he, then he got drafted by the New York Jets and went and played for the New York Jets for a while. When he would make a tackle, the the the, the PA announcer would say, "Guess who?" and everybody in Shea Stadium would say, "Wahoo!" <laughs> so he was he was really popular. And then the next year, they were going to draft uh, Joe Namath, and they didn't want any competition for the most popular player. So they ended up trading Wahoo out to Denver or Miami or somewhere, so they so Joe Namath could come in and be the star of the, of the New York Jets instead of Wahoo. And that's when Wahoo got mad and became a professional wrestler and his career was born. But he had a bad ass chop, man. He chopped me in the throat one time and 
I thought my my Adam's apple had caved in. I'd hit the hit the, hit the floor of the ring. Couldn't get my breath. He'd scream out, "Get up, Briscoe, get up!" And I couldn't because of, because he'd chopped me so hard in the throat. And finally, we got back to the dressing room. He said, "Why the hell did you go down?" I said, "God dang, why, who, why, why did you chop me so hard in the throat?" He said, "Well, hell, if you wasn't so damn short, I wouldn't hit you in the throat." So he was blaming it on me. So. <laughs> It's your fault for It's my fault, yeah. <laughs> are you even short? How tall are you? Five eleven. <laughs> you're so short. Why are you so <laughs> you're you're a little person basically. And he wasn't much taller. <laughs> Wait, we have another comment, controversial comment. A a wrestling historian says Gerald Briscoe is a true legend in the business. Thank you, a true historian. He's a historian. It's, he's, he knows. Yeah, yeah, you got to. Chris Carmichael does follow me. Thank you. He says, I do now. I do follow you now. Thank you. That's another one. That's another one you picked up calling me. Listen, we got a lot of butt kisses. We're making Chris Carmichael famous tonight. <laughs> yeah, he, he owes us both of <laughs> Zach Ruby says he's a legend. Look at you. Um, What else? Uh, man, Briscoe used to take some potatoes from Stone Cold back in the Stooge days. Oh, man, let me tell you about that. You know, when, when Stone Cold would say he want, he'd stomp a mud hole in there. You know you know what that is, Taylor? It's when he you would kick. You, kick you grew up in the city. You're yeah. a city boy, so, but yes. you know what a mud hole is, right? I never really thought of it, but it's a, a, a hole with mud in it. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not. It, 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 okay, here's how it starts out. It rains, you know. You live out in the country, it's dry, you know. Not like the city life that you're from, uh, San Diego, the the the, uh, the Riviera of the Pacific or whatever that place is. But anyway, <laughs> what are we talking about? Slumping on mud hole in you. So yeah. a mud hole is when, when, you, when you're a little kid and you got nothing to do out and out in uh, Oklahoma, you come along and it's raining. There's a little bit of rain on on the, on the dirt, so you go over and you start stomping that damn water hole until it turned into a mud hole. You get I, it? Yes. Okay, oh, I you see. stomp water on the dirt and it turned into mud. So I see. Stomp a mud hole in you. So it starts out water and it turns into a mud hole. I hear you. Okay, now you understand what I'm about. But anyway, that's that hurts. And so cold. Now you got to you got my. I'm into my my late fifties, you know, when I'm doing that stooge thing. And Stone Cold is he's in a battle, you know, to to get over and win the Monday Night War. So he ain't pulling no punches when he goes. He didn't care if I was sixty, one hundred and six years old or whatever how old I was. He was gonna go out there and Stone Cold was gonna get over and he was gonna stomp a muddle in. He's hit me so damn hard and. He, Loved it, man, and I—I I mean, I—I I fall back the best I could, but he's a tough ass Texan man. So, so anyway, uh, that that story about stomping mud hole into it hurt when Stone Cold beat the crap out of me. And those stunners, they 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 stun you a little bit, but the, when the Austin would hit you, man, he hit you. There wasn't no drawing back. He he hit hit me. He treated me just like he would if he was in the ring with Undertaker or somebody his own age. I mean. And I'm, I was old enough to be his old man, you know, and he beat the hell out of me. So I hope you're proud of yourself, Austin. <laughs> Austin's probably watching. He's a big fan of mine. He probably is because he, he told me personally he's a big fan of yours. Wow, I'm I'm gonna save this video, and I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna, I'm gonna on my website I'm gonna have a quote. Stone Cold says I'm a big fan of yours. And then uh, quote below, Gerald Briscoe said this. Gerald Briscoe, <laughs> according to Gerald Briscoe. <laughs> according to Briscoe. <laughs> Buddy, do you see this love you have? Gerald Ethan says, Gerald, you are a legend, man, deserved Hall of Famer. Thank you. Over Huge says, if Gerald was in his prime, he would have killed Stone Cold. You could have been on the dark side of the ring for being a murderer. I don't want that. I don't like I, I was on that show, and they got those facts all mixed up, too. Uh, they, they, they that little thing they called the Montreal Screwjob. We, we, I was involved in that thing. And that, you know, that's just idle talk. What, what, what were they incorrect about? Me being a bad guy. Oh. 
did Brett say you're not cool or the the I can't the, remember. I that I yeah, they're just they're, they're just incorrectness. The problem with those stories I it's like it's he said she said, right? So Yeah. And they make a documentary based on this is what he said, this is what the other person said, and it's like Yeah. But you well, were like the Road Warriors last night. That was a good story. When Paul Ellering, that last, if you guys, these really special filmmakers, uh, Jason and Evan, they made this Dark Side of the Ring on Vice. It's got huge ratings. The Rock posts about it all day. The Rock does these chats, and he he randomly will start talking about Dark Side of the Ring. But when Paul Ellering spoke at the end, talking about Hawk's funeral, like it was so touching. It was really beautiful. Paul Paul is one of the most intelligent men that ever stepped into a wrestling ring, too. The guy is just a brilliant, brilliant man, and uh, so much respect for him and and uh, his emotion there. Is how we all felt, you know. It, it, you just, just it was a sad day for us. Yeah. Um, well, let's take it back. Let's, let's talk about something fun. You know? Let's talk about something fun. Let's go look at the compliments putting you over. Kid Chocolate says, "One of the goats. You're a goat." I'm a. I guess. <laughs> Do you know what goat? So, uh, do you run an X Pac out there? Yeah, I've run into him a few times. Yeah. He what a good guy he is. You know, he's from right here in the Tampa Bay area too. Okay. You didn't know that, did you? I didn't I thought he's from Minneapolis, but you, I believe you. Okay, you better. <laughs> yeah, he, <laughs> he he broke in down there. I don't know if he broke in, but he wrestled a, that old F C W down here. Back in the old days, what if I think one of his first wrestling gigs, and he must have weighed a uh, buck thirty-five, buck forty-five, something like that. But the guy had so much fire and so much energy and just so much charisma, and uh, he couldn't help but be a star. And I'm, I'm so proud of him, and he's he, he got a great life now, and a, he, he two-time Hall of Famer now. Good for good for X Pac. He's a great. Guy. He's Jacks now too. Is he? I haven't seen him like that. Really... Yeah, I Google X. I'm, I'm Jack, dude. I got to <laughs> You are. I looked at so, so many, because I edited that whole show together. It's very, I cut it up. I, I, I spent so much time, and like, I was looking through all the pictures. Were you okay with the picture I used of you? You were in the all... hardcore, you were in the hardcore championship in the photo I used of you in the show. How come I didn't see that? It's, you probably skipped the part at the beginning when I talked, and you went, you went right to you. Yeah, I didn't want to listen. <laughs> That's fair. I get it. Wait, hold on. Do you know what goat means if someone says you're one of the goats? It means I eat grass or something like that. <laughs> oh, what's that mean? <laughs> no. Do you, know, do you not know what it means? Goat. <laughs> you're a goat. It means greatest of all time. Goat? Goat, greatest of all time. <laughs> oh, <dog. laughs> it also It means you eat cans. That's what it means. It means you, you live in the mountains, you eat cans. I like Spanish. <laughs> okay. Uh, Amanda, one wrestler, says, Hi, Gerald. Miss you. Hope all is well. Uh, great, Amanda. Thank you. Uh, Cam says, Briscoe, what's your take on the change of the Oklahoma flag as a Native American? Uh, well, I really didn't like it, you know, and, uh, you know, this PC stuff, uh, sometimes it just goes a little too far, and, uh, and uh, I, I understand respect for everybody, you know, but if you're going to do stuff like that, and I'm going to get, uh, I'm going to piss some people off, change the damn name of Washington NFL football club out there, you know. I mean, change it, you know, do the right thing. Daniel Snyder, he's That's one of crazy. your right? He, he's one of your, your guys, and Daniel Snyder. He says it's not I, a thing. <laughs> so call, my you rabbi call, and have call Daniel and tell him to say that damn name. Have a little respect. Or, or make it even, and let's get like the San Diego Jews. That uh, you said it, I did. So. I'm Jewish. For those of you who don't know, I'm Jewish, and I'm making a Jewish joke, and I I can't because I'm Jewish. I'm Damn. glad. I'm Look glad that. you. I'm glad you said that you were Jewish. Hashtag equality and acceptance. I agree. Get rid of that stupid name. It's disgusting. Um, I love the argument that the stupid white people make. It's been around forever. Okay, well, 
let's okay well we did it and now we're done and we're better now yeah let's move on then uh, gerald briscoe who'd win in a shoot you or patterson in both your primes oh i'd kick his ass <laughs> somebody said earlier that you beat up steve austin in your prime too i don't believe that though <laughs> do you, you believe in a, in a shoot internet i'm sorry you can't believe everything you read on the internet <laughs> Dude, you're hilarious. Why, wow. Briscoe, American legend. When do you Americans go legend. buy my tripod so I can hold this phone right? What happened? When do you go buy me a tripod so I can hold this phone right? Do you, you, you tell me every time I get a tripod? I saw somebody on TV the other day and had a tripod. So that's what Taylor's been telling me to get all the time. Brother, send me your address. I'll send you a great tripod. As much as you have me on the show to get free publicity and get a little rub, you know, you should furnish me with some technical thing there. Can I tell you what a joy it would be to send you a killer tripod? When we hang up, I'm going to call you, make you talk to me for five more minutes, and I'm going to get your uh, eyes. Uh, Can you imagine five more minutes of talking to me? You know, and I hope not, because, you know, it's almost 10 o'clock here in Florida, and I'm an old man. You know, the sun's gone down. <laughs> It is. We, well, good for you. You're so lucky. Good news for you. This thing automatically stops after an hour. So good. We, have, we, <laughs> we have less than five minutes left, so we can wrap it up right now. How did you get me on this damn show anyway? It was, I'm like, the one who had to figure this out. You were trying to talk me then to it, and nothing was happening. So I just started hitting buttons, and ladies and gentlemen, I figured it out. I'm impressed that you did it, honestly. Let me just share oh, with I'm, you. I'm not going to hide from nothing. You know, you, you've taught me a lot about the internet. You filmed my first According to Briscoe show, and you're the one to talk me into doing that goofy stuff, you know, and I enjoyed doing it, but it became work after you left, and I had no producers or anything. I'm, you know, I need to be produced, so. Well, let's ask the people here, do you think that, would you enjoy it if me and Gerald Briscoe did more of these things, and we got, and I produced it for Gerald, so he all he had to do was turn on and, Answer questions. So well, there are no comments. <laughs> cricket, cricket. Um, I don't think they're listening. I think they're just asking questions. Happy birthday. No, uh, thank you for this. Do would any of you guys watch this again if we did more of these things? What are they saying? They're laughing at me. <laughs> Hell yeah, Stone Cold. They don't want more of them. You got a thumbs up. You got a hell yeah, hell yes. Okay. Look at this. They want it. Over the people the want it. The people want it, huh? Look at this. It, there's a little bit of a delay. I think that's what happened. Briscoe, you got to look at this. Everyone, hell yeah, take care of Jerry. Send Jerry and send Jerry the package. Um, so, See, yes, for sure. You're moving this phone around all the time, don't you? What's that? You get dizzy with me moving this phone. <laughs> yeah, listen, Jer Jer Jerry, Gerald Briscoe, he's getting a little, little uh, out of control right now. I think we should wrap this up. I want to say thank you for doing this, brother. This was really fun and random. I loved it. We made some people smile, made some people happy during a scary time. And you got, and you got three or four new followers? I got a few new followers. Maybe... Uh, Maybe maybe you got some new followers, brother. Maybe you got some. I hope so. How do you tell? You're, next time you log into your Instagram, it's going to show new followers. Oh, okay. Listen, let's wrap this up. Oh, my God. Felipe Esparza, the winner of Last Comic Standing, Netflix, HBO comedian Felipe Esparza is watching you, WWE Hall of Famer legendary Gerald Briscoe. The one that beat you for the title? <laughs> he he beat me for the title of Last Comic Standing. He's right there. I'm challenging you. You, you and I, you show up at the side splitters where all the big stars do in Tampa, Florida, and you and I are going to go at it. <laughs> Dude, Felipe, you just got challenged to a fight with the legendary Gerald Briscoe. I'm honestly jealous. If you beat me up, I, I would, it would be an honor, honestly. You put in that, the what was the lock that you told me about? Lewis lock, man. The Lewis lock. Yeah. Listen, let's wrap this up. Uh, it's gonna because it's gonna turn off. Everybody, please follow Gerald Briscoe. Look up his my stories with Gerald Briscoe. 
on his Instagram, uh, uh, his Instagram television. And uh, we did a podcast, Don't Touch My Pod. It's an hour interview, silliness like this, great stories. And um, I love you, buddy. And uh, let's do this again sometime. Love you too, brother. You stay safe out there in L.A. And uh, stay healthy and all, all these people tune in tonight. You guys, God bless you. Stay healthy and, uh, and uh, be smart. Listen to him. Don't listen to me, but listen to this guy. All right. Bye, everybody.